2004, a military jury convicted Camilla Mejia of desertion. He was sentenced to a year in prison. He served nine months behind bars, prompting Amnesty International to declare him a prisoner of conscience. Camilla Mejia has written a book about his experience. It's called The Road from Armadi, The Private Rebellion of Staff Sergeant Camilla Mejia. Camilla joins us today in our firehouse studio in New York, just back from St. Louis. Welcome to Democracy Now!, Camilla. Thank you, Amy. Talk first about this decision of Iraq Veterans Against the War, a group of, what, more than 500 people to actively encourage war resistance. Last count was 525 members with new members joining every day, Amy, and um, the decision was made to, as an organization, support war resistance within the military as a way to undermine the war effort. And in terms of the, the growth of that, of that resistance movement over the last couple of years, since, uh, obviously since uh, you, uh, you were one of the first, uh, what, um, how do you see that developing? I think uh, we've, we've come a long way from the time when, when I resisted the war. Uh, like Amy said, I was the first public combat veteran to refuse to redeploy to Iraq. Um, back then, when I, when I went public with my refusal to go back to the war, we had approximately 22 cases of desertion in the military. And then by the time I got out of jail, that number was 5,500. Today, it's over 10,000 people within the military who are refusing to go to the, the war in Iraq since the war started. And just to put it in perspective, that's, that's almost like saying like the uh, 101st Airborne Division was wiped out by desertion or AWOL, basically people not wanting to fight the war. How many? Uh, over 10,000 people. So that's the equivalent to an army division. The Pentagon's not talking about this. No, they're not talking about it, but USA Today reported it uh, last year, I believe, uh, early last year, 8,000 people, and it's, it's probably a lot more when you talk to uh, organizations like the GA Rights Hotline who you know, get a number of calls from people uh, trying to find out information about uh, discharges and about uh, what happens once they go away, well, once, what, what happens once they resist to go uh, to, back to the war. And their numbers are, you know, an indication that the actual number is much higher. Uh, also, uh, we've, we have uh, some new developments uh, uh, in the war. We had, uh, a, a long time ago, we all heard about the, uh, the, the, the company of truck drivers who refused to go out on what they considered to be a suicide mission. Uh, we also have the case of a soldier called e Eli Israel, uh, who refused to go, to go out on combat missions while being in Iraq and uh, was threatened by the military with court martial. He finally got a summarized court martial, and he's, he's back in the, in the States. But this level of resistance, not just you know, uh, coming from people who have served in Iraq and have come back and refused to go back, but now we have people on the ground in Iraq who are refusing to, to go out on combat missions, which I think it's, it's pretty significant. Uh, and one of the things that seems to me that has happened in talking to quite a few veterans who've returned maybe or on leave, that those who go AWOL, it's not as if the military publicizes it or actively goes after them unless they become public, like in, in, in your case, right? Exactly. Uh, although that also has changed. We have cases of people who have not yet gone public and yet have been seized at their home. For instance, we have the case of uh, Suzanne Swift, who was... Um, you know, apprehended by, by police without even a search warrant at her mother's house. Um, and she had not gone public at that time, and, and she had refused to go back to the war because she had been subject to uh, military sexual assault and, and command rape uh, from her leadership and being forced to go back to the war uh, with the same unit and with the same people who had attacked her. Uh, so we have uh, a movement that is not necessarily just politically against the war, but we have all kinds of reasons why the military is becoming increasingly disaffected with the government and with the mission in, in Iraq. You know, we had uh, the women who uh, died of dehydration because they stopped hydrating themselves after afternoon because they were being raped on their way to the latrine. Uh, we have the lack of equipment, you know, while they're saying support the troops and the war is costing five, five billion dollars a month, you have troops going out in combat missions without the proper equipment, without radio equipment. Sometimes we had to suspend missions in my combat unit because we didn't have enough water. So you have a number of reasons, you know, from political to family issues to command rape to lack of equipment, why people are basically refusing to go back to the war saying, you know, we don't want to fight this, this war for this or that reason. 